I'm Brother Bowie from the Israel of God, coming to you, teaching, preaching the gospel by subject and title. Today we're going to deal with the baptism. The title of this lesson is the baptism. A lot of people think when it's come to baptizing that they've been baptized when the Lord, when the preacher put them in the water and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm going to show you why they do that and show you also that when Jesus made this statement, they didn't hear him. So we're going to start this in Matthew, the 28th chapter, and this is after Jesus' resurrection. He came and dealt with his apostles. We're going to start at verse 28, uh, verse 18, Matthew 28 and verse 18. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, uh -huh. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now the Lord left a directive here to his apostles. First thing he told his apostles, which are Israelites, to go and teach all nations. Not to go and learn from all nations, but to go and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. But because the, we didn't teach them and we allowed them to teach us, we quoted Jesus verbatim because that's what they do. But he said, in the name. Mm -hmm. Now, people will say, you know, there ain't no Father and no Son. We're going to have a look at this. Let's go into Proverbs, the 30th chapter, and we're going to read one verse. <coughs> verse 4. Well, Proverbs 30 and 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, read it. Who have descended up into heaven uh -huh. or descended? Who have descended up in heaven or descended? Go ahead and read. Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Uh -huh. Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath gathered the wind? Who's bound the water in a garment? Go ahead and read. Who hath established all the ends of the earth? Uh -huh. What is his name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Now he asked the question. If there was no father and no son, then it would not be said here. So what is the the one that did all and created everything? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell? Well, first thing, sisters and brothers, we're going to see if we're going to find that. So we didn't establish a son and we have established a father. Mm -hmm. Now, but we got a third entity here and we got to look into. We're going to Exodus, the sixth chapter. Exodus, the sixth chapter, and we're going to look at, pick up us a name here. We're going to pick up a name. We're going to start at six and two. Exodus six and two. Go ahead. And God spake unto Moses uh -huh. and said unto him, Go ahead. I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Now look, he said, now this is God talking to Moses. He said, I am the Lord. I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and Jacob as, the, as God Almighty. Go ahead and read. But by my name Jehovah. But by my name Jehovah. Was I not known to them. Now, we have us a name here. Mm -hmm. We have us a name which is Jehovah. He said, by this name was I not known to them. But let's see what happens to this Jehovah. Let's go into Isaiah the 12th chapter. Isaiah chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 2. Isaiah 12 and verse 2. Okay, go ahead. Behold, God is my salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. Go ahead and read. I will trust uh -huh. and not be afraid. Uh -huh. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. So, so the Lord Jehovah is my strength and he is my song. He is also become my salvation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, sisters and brothers, he was one thing, but then he became something else. He became your Savior also. Mm -hmm. So now, we are going to pursue this. Now, we're dealing with Jehovah. And let's see where he is going to enter in this thing, or where he is going to exit it. Let's go into St. John, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 43. Because these things we need to know and understand. Go ahead and read. I am come in my Father's name. I am come in my Father's name. This is Jesus talking here, sisters and brothers. I am come in my Father's name. Go ahead and read. And ye receive me not. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, uh -huh. him ye will receive. Now one did. One 
came in his own name, John the Baptist. He came in the spirit of Elijah. He was Elijah to come in that particular time. But he didn't come in the name of, uh, of Elijah. He came in his own name. But Jesus said, I come in my father's name. Now, if we want to know what the father's name is, then we have to go and see what the, what Jesus' name is. Being that he didn't come in his name. Let's go into Luke, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. Luke 1 and verse 26. We're going to take our time and look at this thing and understand this mm -hmm. thing, sisters and brothers. Luke, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse 26. Okay, go ahead. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee uh -huh. named Nazareth. Go ahead. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph uh -huh. of the house of David. Go ahead. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now, they sent him to Mary's house. Now, the angel had a subject, uh, a, uh, a message for Mary. The angel Gabriel was bringing it to her. Skip down to verse 30, and let's see what this message is. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, uh -huh. and shall call his name Jesus. So you shall conceive in your womb, and you're going to bring forth a son, and ye shall call his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. Finish that. That's the end of it. He now, shall be great, uh -huh. and shall be called the Son of the Highest, Go ahead. and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So he's going to be called Jesus, and he's going to sit on the throne of David. So now, if Jesus, uh, uh, if Jesus said, I come in my father's name, then that leads me to know one thing. Then Jesus is also the father's name, sister and brother. That's why I tell people, kick it on the name of Jesus, you better be real careful. Maybe you're messing around somewhere that you should not. So now, if Jesus came in his father's name, that tells me that the father's name is Jesus also. Mm -hmm. Somebody just didn't use the word junior. Mm -hmm. Now let's go into St. John, the 14th chapter now. And we're going to see about the Holy Ghost. St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 15. St. John, the 14th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 15. Okay, go ahead. If you love me, keep my commandments. Uh-huh. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, uh -huh. that he may abide with you forever. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 25, and go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you, uh -huh. being yet present with you. Uh -huh. But the Comforter. But the Comforter. This is the one he said is the Father going to send mm -hmm. you. Go ahead and read. Which is the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. whom the Father will send in my name. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name. Go ahead. He shall teach you all things. Uh -huh. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So when this Comforter, the Holy Ghost comes. He's going to teach you all things and remind you of all the things that the Lord has said. He ain't going to bring you something new, sisters and brothers. But the thing about this comforter, he came in Jesus' name. So if the comforter came in Jesus' name, and Jesus came in his Father's name, mm -hmm. then that tells me, sisters and brothers, that this is the name that Jesus wants you to baptize people in. Now let's see now on this name Jesus, because people kick on this all the time, but we want to go to Malachi the 11th, first chapter, and look at this. Malachi chapter 11. Chapter 1. Uh, uh, chapter 1, rather. Malachi chapter 1. And let's read one verse. Verse 11. Malachi 1 and 11. Because we need to pay attention to this now. This is the Lord talking here. This is the Lord talking here. This is not somebody that decided that uh, 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 I'm going to make me a statement. This is the Lord is telling his people. Go ahead and read. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, uh -huh. my name shall be great among the Gentiles. From the rising of the sun. This is the Lord talking here. Until the going down of the same, my name shall be great among Gentiles. The Gentile. Who are the Gentile sisters and brothers? White folks. Go ahead and read. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. 
And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, go ahead and read. And a pure offering uh -huh. for my name shall be great among the heathen, said the Lord of hosts. He said a pure offering because my name shall be great among the nations. That's what heathens are. Sisters and brothers, when you look at the name that's greater among the Gentiles, which are white folk, and great among all the nations combined, that name is Jesus. And you're going to tell me that the Lord don't know his name? You're going to go to, to me for, well, there ain't no J in Hebrews. There ain't no alphabets in Hebrews all together. <laughs> well, the, well the, the letter J just showed up so many years ago. However many years ago it is, the Lord put it out here, and can't, you can't do nothing about it. Because the Lord is the one that gave all the languages on the earth at the Tower of Babel. You tell me. He's going to give a language that he don't understand. That's why the Lord told you. For those that would listen, said, look. Israel is drunk. Come a spiritual drunk. And his doctrine is just like vomit on all tables. Then he said, whom shall I teach knowledge? And to whom will I in teach doctrine? Those that are weaned from the breath and drawn from the milk. So I'm going to teach them line upon line. Precept upon precept, hear a little, there a little, with stammering lips, and another tongue will I speak to this people. Because he knew that Israel was going to be scattered into all nations, and in whatever nation you find yourself in, or we find ourselves in, that is the language that we're going to speak. So whatever the language is, the Lord knows what his name is in it. But he gave you a name that no matter what the languages are, all of them seem to call on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, when you tell me that this name is improper, then you're telling God that you don't know what you're talking about. You ain't telling me that. And look what he said about this name now. Let's go in the Acts, the fourth chapter. Acts, the fourth chapter. And you can take it or leave it. But I have to put it on the table. Acts, the fourth chapter. Because people, well, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to deal with that. Well, you can deal with what you want. You know, Lord told every soul got to work out their own salvation. Mm -hmm. If you And he put before you life and death, good and evil. So choose life and live. So if you choose death, I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's on you. All I have to do is tell you about it. Acts 4, and let's start at verse 10. Acts 4 and 10. Okay, go ahead. Be it known unto you all. Uh -huh. And to all the people of Israel, uh -huh. that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh -huh. whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you hold. See, Peter them heal a man. And they looking at Peter them like shape them big thing. Peter said, no, no. I'm going to tell you who it is. The one, one Jesus, the one that y'all crucified. He is the one that healed, that through him this man is healed. Mm. Go ahead and read. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, uh -huh. which has become the head of the corner. Now, this is the big, this is the grand big secret. Jesus was not rejected just in this generation. He's always been rejected. Mm -hmm. So the stones which the builders rejected have become the head of the corner. Mm. The very one that everybody's kicking against, that's the one that set the head of everything. Go ahead and read. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there salvation in any other. Go ahead. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So ain't no other name. The Lord said, had Peter right. No other name given among men whereby we may be saved. No other name but Jesus, sister and brother. So now, when you get ready to baptize somebody, let's see what Peter and them did. Let's back up to Acts, the 8th chapter. Our second chapter, rather. Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading that verse 36. Because once these people realized that they had killed Jesus, they asked a the question to Peter there. Verse 36, go ahead. Therefore, let us let all the house of Israel know assuredly uh -huh. that God had made the, that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So now he is the one, he is the Lord, and he is the anointed one. That mm -hmm. same Jesus. Go ahead and read. 
Now when they heard this, uh -huh. they were pricked in their heart right. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, uh -huh. what shall we do? Well, that's when they heard this, they wanted to know what should we do because yeah. they realized that they was in violation. And what did Peter them tell them? Go ahead and read. Then Peter said unto them, uh -huh. repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you. And be the, baptized every one of you. Go ahead and read. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. In the name of Jesus. For the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. This is Peter here, sisters and brothers. So when he baptized them in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, he baptized them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Jesus didn't come in his own name, which was Jehovah or Yahweh. He came in his Father's name, which was Jesus. So if he came in his father's name, then his father's name was Jesus. And he said he would pray to father and he would send you the Holy Ghost in his name. So when you baptize in the three sisters and brothers, you've done that. For the people that said, I baptize you in the name of the father, that ain't no name. <laughs> that is the title of every man that have a child. I baptize you in the name of the son. That is no name. That is every man on the planet. Because every man is a son. And the Holy Ghost come in many forms. The Lord told you that the air you breathe is spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Ghost is just saying, uh, saying. Jesus tell you also that the word that he speak is spirit. Spirit cover a lot of things. God is a spirit. Jesus is a spirit. Every angel is a spirit. Even the evil angels are spirits. So when you say I baptize in your name of the Father, name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, well, Gabriel is holy. Mm -hmm. Michael is holy. In fact, every angel that didn't follow Satan is holy. Two-thirds of an innumerable amount of angels. So what you talking about? But the reason we didn't baptize, the reason we, we have people Baptized in the name of the Father, which is no name, uh, uh, which, which was not called, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, is because instead of us listening to Jesus, really listening to it, He told Israel, "Go ye into all the earth, preaching the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost." Instead of us going into the all the nation and preaching the gospel to them, we went and allowed them to preach the gospel to us. But being that they didn't have it, they were wanting this in error. But it's an honest error because the Lord didn't give it to them. Mm -hmm. Now let's go and see what happened when Paul ran into some people. Let's go into Acts the 19th chapter. Because everybody going to try and talk about Paul, but let's see if Paul has some understanding. Let's start at verse 1. Acts 19 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, uh -huh. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Go ahead. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And that's something he ran into a group of people now. They're they doing right now. And they was called on the name of Jesus because John the Baptist told them about it. That's right. But he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since, been, uh, 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 since you have uh, been converted? He said, we, we don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. We ain't heard of it. Go ahead and read. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? Then what, what were you baptized to? Go ahead and read. And they said, unto John's baptism. Uh -huh. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. That's all he was telling them, repent. I'm baptizing you unto repentance. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it in the name of Jesus. So what did he do with them? Go ahead and read. Saying unto the people uh -huh. that they should believe on him which should come after him. Uh -huh. That is, on Christ Jesus. So John said, hey, don't believe on me. Believe on the one that I represent that mm -hmm. sent me before him. Go ahead and read. When they heard this, uh -huh. they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now when they were heard that, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, sister and brother. Now you have Peter. The ones that the Lord left the keys of the kingdom with, he baptized in the name of Jesus. Then you have Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, he baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't you think that somebody would go in the book and get an example if you don't really understand what the Lord is telling you to do? 
But nobody bothered, sister and brother. Nobody bothered at all. Everybody's going on doing their own thing. So if Peter baptized in the name of Jesus and Paul baptized in the name of Jesus, then why is it that we ain't baptized in the name of Jesus? And why baptize in the name anyway? Because Jesus is the intercessor. Let's go and point out another intercessor and see how Israel was baptized. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Because these things the Lord put here for our consumption, sisters and brothers. He wants us to know these things. And once you understand how the Lord operate, then you tell people, you better take another look at this guy. Maybe you don't understand what you're doing. Maybe you don't understand what you're doing. First Corinthians, the tenth chapter, and we're gonna start reading at verse one. First Corinthians, the tenth chapter, and verse one. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I would not that you should be ignorant Go ahead. how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea uh -huh. and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Say, so look, I don't want you to be ignorant. All our fathers was in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. And they was all baptized under Moses in the clouds and in the sea. That's We're going right. to read just a little more of that. Mm -hmm. Why was all of these guys baptized unto Moses? Because Moses at that time was the intercessor system, brother. Mm -hmm. Moses was the only one that the Lord would listen to. He wouldn't listen to nobody else but Moses. Even Aaron, which is supposed to be the high priest, the, Moses told Aaron, look, the Lord was going to kill you, but I had to pray for you. About three or four times, the Lord, Moses had to t ask the Lord to forgive Israel and talk him out of destroying the whole nation. Because the Lord listened to Moses, therefore Moses was the intercessor, therefore all Israel, when they came through the Red Sea, was baptized unto Moses. Now, Jesus is the intercessor. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Therefore, he is the intercessor. He is the only one that the Lord will listen to, sisters and brothers. He is the only one. You understand what I'm saying? So, when you baptize into Jesus, in his name, which is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then you said that you are buried to the old man, that you're going to walk in newness of life. Let's go look at it. Let's go into Romans, the sixth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. So we know what's going on, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Uh -huh. God forbid. Uh -huh. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, look, when Jesus died for you, died for your sins, and you got baptized in his name, you wiped your slate clean. So he said, now, we done got this free gift. We didn't do nothing to earn it. Now, the Lord, he gave us this free gift. He done wiped our sin. Now, shall we continue in sin because he done gave us a free bit? Give God forbid. Go ahead. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? That's what it means. We're baptized into his death, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Therefore, we are buried with him by uh, baptism uh -huh. into death. Go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See, and this is what it's all about. You call it, that's why Peter said, repent and be baptized. Because once you get baptized and you go in that water, just like when Jesus went in the ground, he was a flesh and blood man. He was man. And when he raised from the dead, he was God. He was an altogether different being, physically. So we, uh, when we go in that water and come out, we're supposed to come out altogether a different being, spiritually, since we can't make this, uh, our physical transition at this time. Mm -hmm. In other words, walk in newness of life, sin no more. Go ahead and read. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, uh -huh. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So the whole thing is, just like you died in him spiritually, 
You, when you come out the grave, you will be a different person. Or either if you're living when he comes, he's going to change you. That's what the baptism is. You are washing away your sin, and you're doing it in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. And let's throw something in here. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. We're going to look at this name that we're talking about. Philippians 2 and 5. Go ahead and read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Go ahead. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant uh -huh. that was made in the likeness of men. See, he was God and became man. Go ahead and read. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself uh -huh. and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's why you got to pay attention. This guy was God, became man, and came and died for us. Go ahead and read. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him uh -huh. and given him a name which is above every name. So God exalted him and gave him a name above every name. Go ahead and read. That at the name of Jesus uh -huh. every knee should bow. But at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven uh -huh. and things in earth uh -huh. and things under the earth. Go ahead. And that every tongue should every tongue should confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Brother, sister, and brother, you either live by the name of Jesus or you will die by it. Thank you for your time. Brother Boy from the Israeli God coming to you again, preaching the gospel by subject and title. The daily title is Jesus, the God of both testaments. Jesus, the God of both testaments. You know, sisters and brothers, the whole world have gone to sleep on this because they don't understand that they have never dealt with but one God, and that was Jesus. But when you really realize this, then that should change your thinking on a whole lot of things, especially being that God is perfect and he do not have to change his mind. Now, let's, have, let's examine this and show you now about Jesus. 
the God of, two te- of both testaments. Let's start this in St. John, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. You know, I got all these smart people that are smarter than the Bible. I got no problem with that. Being that I don't know nobody that's 150 years old. So you can't be that smart. Because everything you got, you got from somewhere else. So when you get something that try and kick against the word of God, you got that from someplace else too. You are a receiver. You ain't sending nothing out. St. John 1 and 1. Go ahead. In the beginning was the word. Uh-huh. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was was God. On your own, you can go to 19th chapter of Revelation and tell you when Jesus was coming, when the heaven opened up, say he was riding up on a horse, and his name was called the Word of God. In other words, he is the spokesman. Mm. Go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. He was God, and he was with God. Go ahead and read. All things were made by him, uh-huh. and without him was not anything made that was made. All things was made by him. Who? The word, sisters and brothers. And without this same word was nothing made. And I'm going to show you it was him that made it. Sure, the Father gave the orders, but the word made it. And this lets you know that the word made it. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. Go ahead. And the world knew him not. And the world knew him not. Jesus is the one that made everything, sister and brother. He wasn't in his father's name then. He was the one that they called Yah. To try and say, like I listen to a brother on TV, where you see Yah, the father. Yah was the son, became the son. You ain't never dealt with the father, brother. And you're supposed to be a Hebrew Israelite. You're supposed to be a priest. You don't understand that child knowledge? It bothers me to look at brothers go and, and, and act like they have so much. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Skip down to verse 14 and read it. And the word was made flesh. The same word was made flesh. Go ahead. And dwelt among us. Oh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. As the only begotten of the Father. And he is the only one at this day that can carry the title. The true title, the Son of God. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and read it. No man hath seen God at any time. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, uh-huh. he hath declared him. So the only begotten Son, the one that is in his bosom, he hath told us about him. Mm-hmm. But let's go look at something. Let's go into Exodus, the 24th chapter. Exodus chapter 24. Because these things are not hard, sisters and brothers. On time, the word of God get complicated, and when somebody try and talk against it, and we have too many Israelites talking against the Lord, too many. But then there ain't no secret. It is our fathers that killed the prophets. It is our fathers that chased the apostles around and stoned them. It is our fathers that put the robbers up to killing Jesus, mm-hmm. even when Pilate tried to let him off the hook. You have not changed. Mm-hmm. And then you're wondering why we're having so many problems. I just tell you why. Because you are kicking against the very God in whose hand your breath is. Now, Matthew, uh, Exodus 24 and verse 1, read it. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, uh-huh. thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship you afar off. So the Lord said, come up here, Moses, you, and, and, and 70 of the elders. In other words, 74 elders. I want you all to come up here and worship Paul. Let's see what they did. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and uh-huh. 70 of the elders of Israel. Go ahead. And they saw the God of Israel. Wait a minute. We just read in, in Luke, the first chapter, John, the first chapter, ain't nobody seen him. That's there. right. These guys saw the God of Israel. Mm. Let's see how long they saw him. Go ahead and read. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. Uh-huh. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Go ahead. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Uh-huh. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. That means they saw him a long time, didn't mm-hmm. They saw his feet. They were looking at him a long time. People, well, you want to get, look, the Bible said they saw God. And they sat there and they ate and drank. 
So now if they saw God, and John the first chapter saying nobody ever seen God, then who did they see? Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and find out. That's why the Lord tell you in Isaiah, the 8th chapter, the law and the testimony, the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to that, that's the all in the New Testament, the all in the New, if they speak not according to that, there is no light in them. In other words, there's no truth in them. You can't use just a piece of this book and then pick, cherry pick what you want out of it. You got to deal with all of it or nothing. Saint, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea. So you know, it was Moses and Israel that was under the cloud in the daytime. It was them that was under the pillar of fire at night. Mm -hmm. It was them that passed through the sea. Go ahead and read. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And we know they baptized to Moses because he's the intercessor. Yes. Go ahead and read. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And they did eat the spiritual meat. Go ahead. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Uh-huh. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And who was that? And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Jesus, sisters and brothers. He just hadn't come in his father's name at that time. It was Jesus that the 74 elders saw. It was him that they looked at all the time while they was eating and drinking. Jesus, because you ain't never seen the Father. Finish that. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Uh-huh. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Look, sisters and brothers, the Lord was not pleased with a lot of Israelites. With a lot of Israel at that time. And he killed a whole lot of them in the wilderness. A whole lot of them. Let's go and look at some of the things that happened during this time. Let's go into Numbers, the 15th chapter. Because you need to look at some of these things. And when you understand that that God of the Old Testament was Jesus, then it'll make you wonder about a whole lot of things that's supposed to be allowed in his name now. 15, let's start at verse 32. Numbers, the 15th chapter, we're going to start reading at verse 32. Okay, go ahead. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Uh-huh. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron. Go ahead. And unto all the congregation. And they put him in war because it was not declared what should be done to him. Now look, the Lord told them to honor the Sabbath to keep it holy. Not to do no work or nothing, but he had not told them the consequences of doing it. So now Moses them didn't know what to do with this guy. So they locked him up. Because it had not been declared what, by God what to do with him. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. The man shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Uh -huh. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. Wait a minute. The Lord said, well, take him outside and stone him to death. And all the congregation took this man out. And they stoned him to death according to the commandment of the Lord. So now this is, being that this is Jesus that was back there with them, then I have a problem with people changing his Sabbath day from the seventh to the first day. And he had a man stoned to death just for picking sticks up on him. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and read verse 6. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 6. Go ahead. Now these things were our example uh -huh. to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. So look, these things are our example, sisters and brothers, that same Jesus, which was Yahweh, uh, Jehovah at the time, had this man stoned to death for polluting the Sabbath day. He said, this is for our example. Our example. Skip down to verse 9 and read it. Neither let us tempt Christ, uh -huh. as some of them also tempted. Oh, you mean you can tempt Christ? Yeah, you sure can. As some of them also tempted, go ahead and read. And were destroyed of serpents. And he said snakes in there to bite them. Think about what you're reading here. This is the same Jesus that was here. And the name that he told Moses about was Yahweh or Jehovah. All of a sudden he came and he don't care nothing about nobody. He loved everything, brother. Everybody, brother, come to you as he is. 
I got a problem with that system, brother. This is the same Jesus. Now let's go in the 95th chapter of Psalms. We're going to look at something. The Lord got real mad at these people in, the 90, in, in Israel while they was in, in the wilderness. And he made a great big statement. Huge statement. We're going to start at Psalm 95 and 6. Psalm chapter 95 and verse 6. Okay, go ahead. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, uh-huh. for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture yeah. and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. So let's bow down to him now. So today, if you would hear his voice, go ahead and read. Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Go ahead. As in the provocation uh-huh. and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Now, he said, don't be like the people were when they was in the wilderness. Don't harden your heart like in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Because that's when they tempted God. Go ahead and read. When your fathers tempted me, uh-huh. proved me, go ahead. and saw my work. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Go ahead and read. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation uh-huh. and said, It is a people that do err in their heart. Uh-huh. And they have not known my way. He said, Forty years long will I grieve with this people. These are Israelites in the wilderness. Hadn't even gotten to the promised land. Mm. The Slavery and dust of Egypt hadn't even been brushed off them yet. But still, he suffered with them 40 years, and they still didn't believe him. And they tempted him constantly until he really got angry. What did he do? Go ahead and read. Unto whom I swear in my wrath uh-huh. that they should not enter into my wrath. Unto whom I swear in my wrath they should not enter into my wrath. In other words, these people ain't going to be in the first resurrection. Mm-hmm. When I rule for a thousand years, these people are still going to be dead. That's if you could understand that. Because Israelites, the priests, we're supposed to understand that. These people didn't believe him. He said, I ain't going to raise y'all in the, in the first resurrection. You know, you're not even prepared. Let's go on to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and pursue this same thing. Hebrews chapter four. And let's start reading at verse one. Because Paul is telling you, don't be like your forefathers. Verse 4, go ahead. Verse 1, rather, go ahead. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering to his rest, uh-huh. any of you should seem to come short of it. He's not let us fear, lest we fall short like they did. Go ahead and read. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. The same gospel, sisters and brothers, ain't nothing different. I don't know about this new era. The same gospel. Mm. Because you were dealing with the same God. And as to them, the same gospel was taught to them as is was taught to us. Go ahead and read. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. But they didn't profit from it. You know why? Because they didn't believe it. That's why he said, 40 years long I agree with these people. Right. And they have not known my word because they didn't believe it. Go ahead and read. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Go ahead. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, and they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He said, look, I swore these people will not enter into my wrath. So I swore in my wrath, even though the work was finished from the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. How do we know that? Go ahead. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day. For he spake of the, first, in the, of the seventh day. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read. On this wise. Uh-huh. And God did rest. The seventh day from all his works. And God rested on the seventh day from all his work. Lord called the end from the beginning, sister and brother. And his day of rest, which is a thousand year millennium period, sister and brother. He said, look, these people are not going to enter into my day of rest. Mm-hmm. So what did Paul uh, 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 warn, these, uh, uh, warn these people about? Skip down to verse 8 and read it. For if Jesus had given them rest. And he mean that because it was Jesus. Remember, he was the one that the 74 uh, four elders mm. sat and watched as they ate. For if Jesus had given them rest, go ahead and read. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. He wouldn't have spoke of another day, sister and brother. He wouldn't have spoke of another day. So what did he say? Go ahead. There remained therefore a rest 
to the people of God. Go ahead. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, Go ahead. as God did from his. Uh -huh. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. That rest, sisters and brothers, is the Lord's day of rest that he swore to the people in, his, in, in the land, in the wilderness, that they would not enter into this rest. I just have to throw this in. Let's go quickly to Genesis, the second chapter. I want you to look at this, sisters and brothers. Genesis, the second chapter, because after the Lord had done all his creating the day, and on each day, he finally got to the seventh day. And look what he said, Genesis 2 and 1. Read it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, uh -huh. and all the host of them. Go ahead. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So that's what the Lord, this is the day of rest he's talking about. He is not talking about uh, this weekly day of rest. He's talking about the thousand year millennium period. So he rested from that day, sisters and brothers, from that time. Keep reading a little more. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day uh -huh. and sanctified it. Go ahead. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Go ahead and read. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. These are the generations of the heaven and earth. Go ahead and read. When they were created. Uh -huh. And the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. Go ahead. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Uh -huh. Every herb of the field before it grew. Go ahead. The Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Uh -huh. There was not a man to till the ground. So look, sisters and brothers, the Lord called the day of rest even before he had created the man. And he said, that is the day that y'all won't get into because of non-belief. This is the same Jesus that came in the flesh. Now let's go into Revelation 22nd chapter. And he's saying something here and nobody pays any attention. 22 and read verse 12 and 13. Go ahead. And behold, I come quickly, uh -huh. and my reward is with me, Go ahead. to give every man according as his work shall be. This is Jesus, I come quickly, and I'm going to give everybody, and my reward is with me. That means there ain't nobody in heaven or in hell, and I'm going to pay everybody according to his works. Mm -hmm. So when somebody tell you you ain't got to do no works, they're trying to take your life away from you. Go ahead and read. I am Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the, the end. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The first and the last. He's telling you, I am the first God you ever dealt with, and I'm going to be the last one. Because when you see the Father, you ain't going to be man. But let's go quickly to Isaiah, the 44th chapter, and read verse 6. Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Okay. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel. Go ahead. And his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. And his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first. I am the first. And I am the last. And I am the last. And Go. beside me, there is no God. And besides me, there is no God. Because you ain't never dealt with nobody but this one. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. Fear ye not. Uh -huh. Neither be afraid. Go ahead. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Go ahead. Ye are even my witnesses. Uh -huh. Is there a God beside me? Uh -huh. Yeah, there is no God. I know not any. See, they got up with all of these pagan gods. He said, I have declared it from the beginning. Is there any God beside me? He said, no, I don't know of any. I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the first and the last. I am the one that you dealt with. Let's go into Isaiah 48 and verse 12. 48 and 12. Go ahead and read. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, uh -huh. and Israel, my call. Go ahead. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. He's telling you again. I'm the one. I'm the first and the last. Because Israel have always rejected this guy. Go ahead and read. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. My hand laid the foundation of the earth. Go ahead. And my hand, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. And my right hand spanned the heavens. Go span the heavens. Go ahead and read. When I call unto them, they stand up together. When I call unto them, they stand up together. He's telling you who did this, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. He's telling you. Now skip down to verse 13, 16 and read it. Go ahead. Come ye near unto me. He said, come near to me. Go ahead. Hear ye this. Uh-huh. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. He said, I ain't never spoken in secret from the beginning. I always declare this to you. Go ahead and read. From the time that it was, uh -huh. there am I. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit hath sent me. But now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So this guy that's man the heaven. 
This guy that created the earth. This guy that said, I am God and there is none other. This guy said that I am the first and I am the last. He said, now the Lord God and his spirit, which is his word, have sent me. Let's find out who was sent then. Let's go into St. John, the sixth chapter, and start reading at verse 38. St. John 6 and verse 38, because we need to know who this was that the Lord sent. Go ahead and read. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, Uh but the will of him that sent me. Go ahead. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, Uh that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. He said, look, I come not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing, but raise it up at the last day. Go ahead and read. And this is the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him that sent me. Say it again. Go ahead. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Uh-huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. And everyone that believeth seeth the Son and believeth on him will have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the the last day. Mm-hmm. Skip down to verse 44 and read it. Go ahead. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Go ahead and read. And I will raise him up at the last day. And I will raise him up at the last day. Sister and brother, somebody's missing the point here. Because Jesus is the only one you've ever seen. He is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. Look what he says concerning the Father. Let's go into St. John, the fifth chapter, and start reading at verse 36. St. John 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 36. Okay, go ahead. But I have a, but I have greater witness than that of John. Uh-huh. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do. Uh-huh. Bear witness of me Go ahead. that the Father hath sent me. Ah, uh, he said, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Go ahead and read. And the Father himself. And the Father himself. Which hath sent me. Which hath sent me. Go ahead. Born witness of me. Uh huh. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. You ain't never Heard the Father that sent me, Jesus said. You have neither heard his voice at any time or seen his shape. He just didn't send him when he came through. Mary, sisters, and brother, he's always sent him. Let's go into Zechariah, the second chapter, and look at this. Zechariah chapter 2. Because we need to understand this so this, my Hebrew brothers could stop trying to commit suicide by kicking against this guy. Because that's what you're trying to commit. Suicide. We're going to start at verse 7. Zechariah 2 and 7. Go ahead. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Uh Uh-huh. For thus said the Lord of hosts. For thus said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations. After the glory hath he sent me unto the Mm nations. The Lord of hosts is telling you this. Go ahead and read. Which spoiled you. Uh Uh-huh. For he that touched you touched the apple of his eye. Look, the one that sent him as the father before he became the father. He's enough. He that touches Israel touches the apple of his eye. Go ahead and read. For behold, I will shake mine hands upon them. He said, I'm going to shake my hands upon them. Go ahead and read. And they shall be a spoil to their servants. And they shall be a spoil unto their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Pay attention, sisters and brothers. Mm. This is the Old Testament. Go ahead and read. Sing and rejoice. O daughter of Zion, uh-huh. for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. He said, look, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Go ahead and read. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, uh-huh. and shall be my people. Uh-huh. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. He said, many nations are going to be joined unto the Lord of hosts. But I am going to dwell in the midst of you, O Israel. Then ye shall know that the Lord of hosts have sent me. How many times do the Lord have to let you know that before you know who you're dealing with? This is the God of the Old Testament. 
Which was the God of the New Testament. What verse was it? We just finished 11. Go ahead and read. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, uh-huh. his portion in the Holy Land. And he going to inherit Judah, his portion in the Holy Land, sisters and brothers. This is Jesus. He told you in the Old Testament and in the New. The Lord of hosts have sent me, but I am the one that created the heaven and the earth. I am the one that spanned the moon and the star. I am Alpha, the beginning, and Omega, the end. I am the first, and I am the last. Before you see the Father, sisters and brothers, you will be a spirit being, either God or whatever else that's called that's going to be in the liquor fire. But you will not be flesh and blood man. Then you're going to find out for sure that the Lord God, the Father, sent Jesus. And when did he first send him? In the book of Genesis, I thank you for your time. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log into our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us in our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.